In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some properties of angles and circles and a little bit about triangles and uh, line segments and circles. So first of all, I have four circles here. I'm going to kind of talk about four different things. So this first one here, and, and what I'm using is it's called GeoGebra. And uh, it's, a, it's an online access, um, sorry, app that you can, um, anyone can use. You don't have to pay for this. And it's great. It's, it's dynamic geometry software. So you can show all kinds of interesting, neat things and investigate things. You might think, well, I wonder if this is true. You can show it on uh, on, on GeoGebra. So, uh, so what I'm going to start with. Uh, so, so here we have a circle. C always. Um, well, this is the center here. It's not always C, but often we use C for the center of a circle. And so, what I'm going to do is I, I've got these three points D, G, and F that are on the circle. And so this angle is said to be inscribed in this arc. So this is this is an arc that goes from D to F here. It's called a minor arc because it's less than half the circle. If we were talking about the arc up along here, that's actually called a major arc. So let's measure this angle. Actually, whoops, I did not do that right. So down here, see I'm measuring an angle. So I'm gonna click on here, and then the vertex, and then up here, and so, that's 47.3 degrees right now. And, and of course, if I drag one of these, you know, I'm going to make it bigger or smaller, right, depending upon how I do that. This is the one that I can drag to make the circle bigger too. Okay. So let's yeah, stop at 49 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another point over here. Let's say right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join this and then I'm going to join this to here. So see this angle D and F is also inscribed in the same arc. So they're they're both inscribed in the same arc because they kind of open up to the same arc. Well, I wonder how big this one is in relation to that one. So let's measure. So let's go D and F. And look, it's the same size. It's 49 degrees. And you see, if I move that around, it stays the same because it's still inscribed in the same arc. Okay, right down here, up there. If I move that around, now, I, if I make the arc bigger or smaller, see I'm making the arc a little smaller, notice they stay the same because they're still both inscribed in the same arc. Okay, so it doesn't matter where I put another point here and draw, as long as it's inscribed in the same angle, it's going to be the same size as these two. Okay, so they're called arc, uh, angles inscribed in the same arc. So <clears throat> let's take a look at um, uh, this second circle over here. Now, this this angle. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to talk about arcs again. This is the angle BE, and <clears throat> these are called inscribed angles because the vertex is on the circle. This is called a central angle because its vertex is at the center. A is the center of the circle here. Now, uh, and so um, I, I've measured, this is 108.3 degrees, you know, and I can drag this to make it, you know, bigger or smaller. Let's stop it right there, go, 96 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another point over here. Okay, that's gonna be O. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to join B to O and then I'm going to join that to E down here. And what I want to talk about next is what's the relationship between this angle and this angle? Between So this is an inscribed angle because it's uh, got its vertex on the circle. And that's the central angle. It's got a ver its vertex of the origin. But they're supposed to op both opening up to the same arc. Well, let's measure. So we go to angle. So we go B, O, E. Ooh, look at that. 48 degrees. Do you notice anything peculiar about 48 and 96? Okay. So notice that that angle is half the size of that angle. Or we could say that the central angle is twice the size of the inscribed angle. Okay. And it doesn't matter where we drag that. Okay. And we can make the arc longer or smaller. Okay, let's let's get that rid of a hundred. Okay, a little bit of rounding here. If you double 50.1, it's not 100.1, it's 100.2. And that's just a little bit of rounding. That's why it looks like it's not exactly on there. But 
you know, if we keep on going here, we make the yeah, make the circle a bit bigger. Here we go. There. 106 is double 53. Okay, so it doesn't matter where I, I, I drag that. See, it's still 53, and that's still double it. Okay, so the uh, if you're comparing a, an inscribed angle and a central angle in the same, that have both open to the same arc, the central angle is always double the inscribed one. Now, let's take a look at this um, um, circle down here in the bottom left corner. And so H is the center of the circle. And what I've uh, done here is I've jo joined two points on the, on the circle, uh, I and J, and that's called a chord. And uh, a chord just joins any two points in the circle. Okay? Um, uh, for example, I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute here. This is called a diameter. It's a special chord. It's the longest chord in the whole circle because it actually goes through the center. Okay, so this one doesn't go through the center, so it's a shorter uh, chord than if I had actually connected right through the center here. Now, what I've done is I've joined the center to the uh, a point on the chord, so that this is a right angle. So notice that uh, so it's it's called the it's the perpendicular. Some people could say it's the perpendicular drawn to the chord. Now, where that perpendicular comes down here, that point K, is a special point on the chord. And what I want to do is I'm going to measure the distance from here to that K point. Okay, so it says it's 3.6. Let's move that off just a little bit here. And so let's measure again from K to J. And notice it's the same distance. Okay. So this point, this uh, line segment here is actually called the perpendicular bisector of the chord. Because when you draw a perpendicular so that it's, you know, it's making exactly a 90 degree angle, it joins the chord in exactly its middle. Okay. Because, so that's the middle. I know that K is the middle of I and J because the um, IK is 3.6 and so is the KJ distance. And, you know, we can, we can make the chord longer. See, notice, okay, see, they're, they're both four now. I still got a right angle here. And, you know, I can make it really, really small. See, they're both 2.4, and this is still a right angle. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter how you, you know, change it. Still a right angle, and they're both two now. Okay, so... Uh, so, and so, so again, when you draw from a um, the center to the uh, to a chord, so that it's a right angle, that point is going to said to bisect the chord, cut it in two equal parts. Okay, last thing I want to show you over here. So this is a diameter. I mentioned that earlier, and uh, I know it's a diameter because the uh, well, that's exactly half the circle. So <clears throat> this uh, see, this is actually a central angle. Okay, remember how a, a circle is 360 degrees, a full circle? Well, I know that this is exactly going through the middle. It's half the circle because half of 360 is 180. Okay, so that central angle is 180 degrees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plot a random point on this circle. And I'm going to join M to that point, And I'm going to join that point to the other end of the diameter. And what does that angle look like? Well, let's measure it. So, angle... So I'll go M, the vertex, and the other side. Oh, okay. Now, actually, this is an interesting thing about uh, uh, about GeoGebra. Depending upon the order you click on the three points for an angle, um, see, it's actually measuring for me the reflex angle, the angle outside here. And you could use a little bit of math if you want to figure this out. But let's just undo that. Okay. See, I went from M to P to here. So I'm going to go back and measure my angle again. I'm going to start at this side, click on P, and click on M, and you see that it's a right angle. So that ang that is a right angle. So whenever you have a, <clears throat> a triangle that's inscribed in a diameter, then the angle has to be a right angle. And actually, you can think of it this way, too. It kind of behaves along these lines here. We could call this an inscribed angle because it's inscribed in that arc, okay? And you see the central angle is 180 degrees here, and this would be half of it, just like, you know, 53 is half of 106. 
So uh, any angle that's inscribed in a in the, the diameter is always a right angle. So there's a few properties of circles that um, that I wanted to share with you uh, that are in the Grade Nine One um, W course in Ontario, the Province of Ontario. So uh, I hope you found that useful, and that is the end of the tutorial.